My name is Dorothy, I'm with Great West Radon, and we're here with Dr. Aaron Godarzi of the Evict Radon organization, asking him some questions about radon in Alberta because of Radon Awareness in Action Month. Dr. Godarzi is at the forefront of radon research and part of the University of Calgary Cummings School of Medicine, um, and we're very happy to be speaking with him today to get a little bit more information on radon and what it is. Um, so if you wouldn't mind just going through um, your involvement in the radon research realm and your credentials, that'd be great. Thank sure. you. Sure. So I'm uh, the Canada Research Chair for Radiation Exposure Disease. I'm a professor at the University of Calgary Charbonneau Cancer Institute at the Cummings School of Medicine, and I'm the founder and the current research lead of the Evict Radon Organization, which is set up to understand and defeat Canada's radon problem. In its simplest terms, uh, what is radon and what makes it so harmful? So radon is, uh, in its most simple uh, definition, a, a highly radioactive and unstable gas. It is odorless, colorless, and indeed no human sense can detect it, which is why um, it, it is so dangerous, because we do not know it's there. Yet it is, and it emits radiation. It emits a type of radiation called alpha particle radiation. This is much worse for us than, say, a simple x-ray, because it damages the DNA of our lungs in such a way that our bodies are unable to heal that um, without introducing genetic mutations. And it's genetic mutations that underlie basically the formation of cancer. So as we inhale radon in high quantities over the long term, uh, our lungs become damaged. That leads to mutations. And that, if you're unlucky enough, or you have a family history that makes you susceptible to it, will result in a lung cancer, even if you have never picked up a cigarette in your life. So why is 200 becquerels per meters cubed the maximum allowable level set out by Health Canada and is this considered a safe level? Right, that's a great question. So there's a number of these numbers floating out there. 200 becquerels per meters cubed is what Health Canada, indeed the Europeans, also use as, as the guidance threshold above which, or at or above which, I should say, um, people should mitigate a property. There's also in the United States, approximately 150 is the level they use, and the World Health Organization says 100. So let's, let's break down those numbers. So the 100 becquerel per meter cube, that's based on the science. And that's the level where we start to see a statistically significant increase in your relative lifetime risk of lung cancer for radon exposure. So that's where you start to see danger. Below that, you don't really need to worry because there's no statistically significant difference. So that's where you start to see it. Health Canada and the Europeans set 200, so twice where you start to see a risk, is where you really should take action. Of course, that is a personal choice because no one's forcing anyone to mitigate for radon. Um, and if you choose to mitigate at lower than 200, for example, if you have children in the home who are more susceptible, you have other risk factors such as tobacco use um, or your occupation, maybe you're exposed to a lot of diesel fumes, you might want to mitigate it a lot lower than 200 becquerels. Um, 200 becquerels is, is a, a unit that is sort of widely acceptable to most authorities and other stakeholder groups is where you absolutely should take action. And that's, and that's approximately why those numbers evolved and, and how you can understand. So 100 is where you start to see risk. Consider 200 as maximum acceptable. Is 200 safe? No. Below 100 is safe. Okay. 200 is maximum tolerated, above which you absolutely should do something about it. So in your opinion, what is the best way to test your home for radon? Right, so the gold standard um, based on the science uh, to, to, to establish your long-term radon exposure is to do a long-term alpha track radon test. So what does that mean? Well, those alpha track tests, those are those little hockey pucks that you see. Um, and and in, those are the simplest, they're typically the cheapest. They require no electricity. All you have to do is place it in the lowest level of your property that someone's spending more than approximately four hours a day for 90 or more days, so three months at least. And the reason it's really important to focus in on a long-term test is that radon really fluctuates quite wildly over the short term, days to weeks, to months even. Uh, and that varies by season of year. It used to be thought that radon was always highest in winter and lowest in the summer. We are finding 
by surveying Canadian households from you know across uh, the nation, that that twentieth century dogma is no longer true anymore. We see plenty of houses with higher rate on in summer than in winter. Uh, yes, there are still houses with higher in winter, and then there are houses that are that are kind of the same all year round if you look at a long term average. But what's important to stress is that over the short term, radon really does fluctuate quite a lot. And if you do only a short term test, you have a very good chance of getting a reading that either gives you a false sense of security, meaning you think you're okay but you're not, or, uh, or a false sense of alarm, meaning you think you have really high radon, but in fact that was just a, a short term blip. And actually, over the long term, you're okay. So I'll stress that whatever type of radon test you use, of which the alpha track test is probably the best one for a first, first time um, test of a property, just do it over the long term. So if people are interested in learning more about what your work is accomplishing and the research results, where can they go to find that out? Great, yeah, so um, we built a website, uh, uh, evictradon.org. Um, easy to remember, so evictradon.org. Um, to uh, find out our latest research. They can uh, sign up there into our study, uh, potentially getting um, one of our, our kits. Um, we have built out a lot of information there on what to do if you have high radon, uh, accurate, um, scientifically validated information. As we all know, the internet these days is a minefield of misinformation. Ours is all backed up by peer-reviewed Canadian science and international science. And so if you go to evictradon.org, you will find everything you should need to know about radon in Canada.